welcome to another episode of Cosmic Conversations. I'm your hostess, Marla Martinson, and I am so excited to be here on this beautiful October day. That's when we're filming, and October is my favorite month, and I'm going to be doing a lot of metaphysical topics, spiritual topics, and I have a really exciting topic today. I've got Kate Jagetti here from a British television presenter and author. I've got her Infinite Possibility uh, book right here, which she's doing a book tour. And she is a British television presenter, and she's got a background in science. And she was first introduced to metaphysics as a teenager by her mother, a former yoga teacher and education specialist. She developed a penetrating and enduring fondness for the self-empowering teach teachings of Neville Goddard, which I've heard the name, but I have am not that familiar, and I'm sure a lot of you out there have heard about this guy, but maybe, you know, aren't sure. After completing her studies, uh, Catherine moved to Switzerland to work at World Health Organization, developing educational resources for rural communities in sub-Sahara Africa. How exciting is that? In addition to her academic science career, Kate has worked with the BBC Science Unit, BBC Radio Oxford, and served as the news editor of the international journal Africa Health, for whom she's conducted research trips, helping set up a, a learning resources and study center at one of Nigeria's forefront teaching hospitals. She's been published in the internationally acclaimed Science Journal, and uh, she's also presented two science series aimed at young adults for Channel 4 in the UK. And uh, she's learned, earned a BAFTA nomination. And she lives in London, but she's coming to us from the U.S. So welcome, welcome. Uh, thanks Thank for you. being here. It's exciting to be with you. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Well, this was, um, I love it. It's, it's not a huge book, but it packs a lot in here. So tell us. Who is ne Neville Goddard? Why should we care about uh, this guy? Um, one of the things I love about Neville um, is that he makes what he talks about, this philosophy that some people think is pretty radical. He makes it a very personal and intimate thing. So it's not just telling you what's possible for you, but he gives you all these practical tools that you can use to really test the veracity of his claims for yourself. So Neville was born on the island of Barbados in 1905. And some people are surprised to discover that he's not a Barbadian person. Right. He's actually an English person, was born to an English family. So it's not this scary colonial sort of family that's you know out there dominating the Caribbean they were a very humble family or let's say a family of modest means it was a large family 10 children nine boys and one girl but they did tremendous work in the Caribbean as a lot of European families did but Neville's family I think um, were really part of the community that they lived in so when Neville was a teenager he left for New York. He wanted to be an actor and to perform on stage. He was a dancer as well. And he came to uh, the New York, to New York. I think that was part of his pioneering spirit. And, and when he got to New York later on, a few years later, he met an Ethiopian rabbi by the name of Abdullah, who taught him uh, the Kabbalah and esoteric mysticism and, and um, the occult uh, arts, if you like. And uh, through that work, his ministry was born. So I think the most radical claim that Neville made is that the human imagination is God. And by God, he means source creator. He doesn't call it, a, he doesn't treat it as a religious concept. He's saying that the source creator of everything that he endearingly called God is the the human imagination it's something that we're all born uh, with and he also says that once we um, adopt that perspective on ourselves we then reposition ourselves as the creators of our own experiences wonderful well what inspired you to really dig into neville goddard's work and and you know i've also studied metaphysics for 30 years and there's the course in miracles and and ernest holmes um, science of mind and just a lot of different people to study and what was it about his work that just grabbed you and and you know seems like that's your main 
main yeah, premise I mean, there. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't read widely around metaphysics as a subject. I think when I first read Neville, the first book I read of his properly was Five Lessons, and it felt like I was talking to someone who knew me and who I knew. It was such a personal experience, and I responded to the way the book made me feel. I've been like that with books my entire life. I have novels that I read as a teenager, which me just as much to me today because of the way the author made me feel. So that's where the bond between myself and Neville was formed. And I love the fact that he said, don't take what I'm saying at face value. In fact, do not accept anything I say, but put these ideas to the test using the techniques and methods I prescribe and see what happens for you. So this is not about trying to persuade someone to be, do or, or have something. You're not you don't have to change who you are. You don't need to. Um, give up or join or pay or whatever it might be. But all he does say is, please have an open mind. And I love the way that he set out his techniques in such detail that made it really easy to grasp and follow. And it was fascinating to me that I had instant results. That's to say, I felt something very, very profound instantly upon trying these techniques. And in replicating them, that's where the science comes in. You know, once you replicate it, uh, you're able to uh, replicate a, a process and you get results, the same results time and time again, then you're proving that theory. And I love that because it encourages us to make, to have confidence in our own ability and to actually decide what is true about something for ourselves without having been told. So I just wanted to add, Marla, you know, I've known about metaphysics since childhood. So in our library at home as kids, we had all the classic children's stories, but we also had metaphysical books as well. So when my mother would read to us as children, these ideas although slightly strange to, to grapple with or not easy to understand necessarily, they were very much a part of the lexicon. The language was very much a part of it for us. So by the time I came to apply it for myself, it was something I was already familiar with. And so how did you come across his books? Was that like serendipitous or someone gave it to you or what, where, what happened there? I was somebody who always asked a lot of questions as a young person. And, my, and I went through this period of telling my mum that I felt that the world was a very, very dark place. I mean, I'm sure all teenagers go through right, something right. similar, but I just said I couldn't stand injustice and I didn't understand why the world seemed so unfair. And she said, why don't you read this book? And she gave me five lessons okay. and I read it. I didn't understand it. I found some of it offensive. <laughs> you know, it seems strange that he was saying that, you know, the Bible is an allegorical document. It's not a religious document. And it was difficult growing up in a, in a Christian household to kind of grapple with those ideas. But I, as I said before, it felt like a friend was talking to me and saying, look, just give it a try. I'm not telling you to accept it. I'm just saying, give it a try. And um, I was hooked from that moment. So, yeah, when I was a teenager and going through this period of sort of questioning the world around me, my mother gave me this book and it started from there. <laughs> the yeah, I love that. My first metaphysical book was The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. Oh, and, you know, book. so I have a, a friend, uh, Joanne, and she says, you know, she calls us, us Shin babies because we love <laughs> all of sh the Shin work. And it does, she, she, it feels like she's your friend. And she was wrote that book in the 20s. And um, do you like do any meditations and kind of connect with him? Like I'm into, you know, connecting with the other side. And do you do you dream? Have you had any, uh, you know, communication with him? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I I don't like to say oh, I've seen although I have seen Neville in dreams, I kind of want to go deeper into that for myself before sharing that with other people but certainly what happens to me if I'm reading a lecture and I don't really understand what he's saying I will ask I will ask energetically right. and when I receive the clarity in a way that I know it's not come from studying or it's not come from any knowledge that I have already or I feel that yeah that's the response I would say I know for myself that that is a response and it feels wonderful to know that I can tap into that source of information for myself and feel that that's coming directly from Neville that's awesome well what you did tell some stories about like tell us uh, something that did happen to you that he does work yeah, so when I was uh, going up for the, the job in, in TV, um, it's an interesting situation. It, it's something I wanted to do. I think a lot of people would love to do TV. Um, but you have this idea that you have to be, you know, as a woman, certainly uh, a certain level of attractiveness or whatever, you know, the right. kind of um, uh, requirements that are put on women exactly. like going into this kind of work. <laughs> they um, sure do. And I had, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I had no experience. And, and when... Um, 
I was actually contacted by the producers and who knew a bit about me and said, oh, would you like to audition? But, you know, don't get your hopes up. There are a lot of talented uh, presenters going up for this role. Agents have put their clients forward, blah, blah, blah. And Neville said, you know, all you need to do is see yourself doing it. So it's not a question of wanting to do it. It was getting into the frame of mind that this job was, really my, was already mine. So I decided to focus on me walking to the studio and, and everybody saying congratulations well done and replaying that scenario over and over until I felt myself doing it and I do go into detail um, in the book somewhat but I also help people when they reach out to me on, on uh, Facebook particularly to understand that what Neville is saying is it's not about visualizing yourself as looking at an actor on screen but being the actor in the scene that's mm -hmm. the, the distinction that needs to be made that when you are performing your metaphysical prayer in imagination, it really must be indistinguishable from something you're doing in the flesh. It must feel that way. And if you think about our experiences, the way we cognize what we're doing or we're cognizant of what's happening, we experience, we are actually telling ourselves, yes, I'm feeling X, Y, Z, I'm yes. smelling this odor, I'm seeing those things. And you can do that with things that haven't yet physically taken place and you will re reap the results just as if those things had taken place. So it's that emotion-backed visualization. You have to have that emotion, the backup of the emotions, the feelings. Is it? Yeah. Absolutely. You're absolutely persuaded that this thing has happened, and you will know because no one can shake you from that conviction that this thing has, has been yeah, done. Yeah, because we don't place. know that uh, whether it's happening or not when we're thinking about something and feeling something, right, that we really... Um, like, I guess if you think about a, a lemon, your mouth starts watering, you know, it's yeah, like you, there's not even a lemon there. So that's good. <laughs> I, th I, was, I was reading a story that you about going to New York. You wanted to go and you didn't have the money. And yeah, tell us that. Yeah. Story. Tell us that. Story. So uh, Mitch Horowitz, who uh, wrote the forward for my book, very, very dear friend of mine. Um, he invited me to be a guest on his show, One Simple Idea, which is on the New Thought channel. And um, at the time I said, yes, we didn't have the funds available for that, so it wouldn't have been possible to take money for other things to, mm -hmm. to pay for the trip. And I just said, yeah, sure, I'll be there. And that was, you know, a few <laughs> days ago. And because we didn't have the money, I had to do what I know to, what I know to do, which is to see myself there. Um, I looked online at pictures of a hotel and just imagined myself in the lobby until I felt the lobby. And I know I have a very peculiar sensation that comes over me it's almost like um a flash when you're taking a photograph and i'm instantly transported to that space so once that happened i knew i was there and then we went to a wedding a couple of days later and somebody my husband um sells land on commission mm -hmm. and somebody said oh i want to buy some land and i'm paying you the commission up front wow. so that's where the money for the trip came from out Just of in the nick of time yeah, I mean, one of the things I love, Marla, though, that Neville says that even though it seems miraculous in the beginning, if you do this, the more you familiarize yourself with this, it becomes part of the normal currency of your thoughts, the normal currency of your experience. Right. And I, and I love playing with that. With that, I one yeah. day I was I decided to to put this in action and test it, and I had claimed I said, someone, okay, universe, someone is going to make a gift, give me a gift of a crystal. And I felt that getting a crystal, and I think it was the next day, uh, a friend of mine came, stopped by and just uh, popped over and said, I think, um, I was thinking of you, and I think you might like this. And she handed me a, a one of those crystal money trees, and it was on on a on a um, amethyst, and then it had was a tree with, with uh, blue stones, crystal stones, and, and blue stones. So there was three crystals all in one and it was like whoa you know it was like it just out of the blue I mean she says I thought you'd like this and so it worked you know it's fun to test it out so you guys try Absolutely. it try, test this and, and, and she you give what I love is you give um um little exercises after each chapter you can put it into action here Mm -hmm. All right, Kate, so, thank yeah. you so much for joining me. And uh, you guys, her info and links are below. And everybody, let, let us know in the comments, uh, what have you manifested? Have you used these techniques? Do you know who Neville is? And, and uh, t I want to hear about your experiences. All right, much love, everyone. <laughs>